and good morning and welcome back to House of Esther's Morning Devotion. My name is Sister Valerie and it is a pleasure to be before you this morning. Today my topic is coming from Psalm 7 verses 11 to 13. Before I jump into it, I want to say a short prayer. Eternal and ever wise God, we just thank you for your omnipotent presence. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you that we are on the wake up list. Thanking you, O oh God, that we are hereby granted the gift of life where we ought to make full use of it, O oh God. Thank you for the viewers. Thank you for each and every one of them that take time out of their busy schedule to hear an additional word of God from House of Esther Ministry, Divine Ministries. I thank you, O oh God, for your presence in our life, and I thank you that you, O oh God, will ordain our daily walk. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, the topic again, God is an honest judge. He is angry with the wicked every day. The meaning of honest is to be free from deceit, to be truthful and sincere. To judge, the meaning of judge, a public officer appointed to decide cases in the law court. We all know that God is supreme. He is a ruler and governor above all things. God cannot lie. He cannot break a promise. He is sincere. He is God all by himself and he has the final say. Okay? God is merciful. We are thankful for his grace and mercy every day. Family in Christ, we have all been wronged or have wronged someone. But when we are being wronged, we tend not to remember who God is because we are flustered and anxiety takes over and we, we get bombarded. But this, this I want you to know is that God sees and he knows all things he knows all things he knows all very sinful thought or actions or deeds he know every sin that we have committed or plan to commit and is planning to say but we have to remember who God is in times of turmoil and stress God is sometimes so far from our very forefront of our thinking Psalm 139 verses 2 and 4. I'm going to read from the Messenger Bible because it's a lot simpler. It states that I am an open book to you. Even from a distance, you know what I'm thinking. You know when I leave and when I come back. I'm never out of your sight. You know everything I am going to say before the very first sentence. So family in Christ, this portion of scripture of, of scripture is saying to us that God never leaves us we may walk away from God but God is forever by our side we cannot play hide and seek with God you know as a child you'll play hide and seek and you'll count one to ten you say hide and seek come and find me come and find me and everybody running around trying to find you but with God we cannot play hide and seek God is ever present every step of the way so to um, Deuteronomy 31 and 8 says and the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you and will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid nor discouraged. This is one of the many, many promises from God. So, you know, I want you to understand that sometimes in life we go through things and you feel like you're all alone, that it's me alone, God, nobody understands. But God is right there. God is right there. He never leaves us. He would never forsake us. Sometimes, you know, as a parent, we leave our children to let them do what they want to do. And then when they bounce their head, they realize, oh my God, mommy or daddy was right. So too with the word of God, the Bible clearly states that we ought to follow the basic principles. So when we do not follow it, we get into trouble. And this is where um, the topic again, it says God is an honest judge. He is angry with the wicked every day. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and 14 says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal the land. This um, scripture, this portion of scripture, it's plain and simple. It's speaking about obedience. So if we don't be obedient to God, things would happen. We will have uprising and all sorts of manner of things would happen. As we look at the world right now, there's so much going on. And sometimes we as believers, we might say, but where is God in all of this? 
But the scripture says that if we do not humble, if we do not pray, if we do not change from our wicked ways, that the land, the land being you personally or the world at large, will be faced with wickedness from people. And it's, it's you know, it's very hard to think that we all would like to be peaceable and live in peace. But the reality is there are some wicked people out there. But this is speaking of obedience. And God is angry. And anger is a God-given emotion of displeasure. When you're displeased about something, me personally, when I'm displeased, my face will tell you everything. I may not open my mouth. But my facial expression, you will know, you know what, don't go around Sister Valerie because she's highly annoyed. Something somebody done done to her or said to her. And it shouldn't be like that, but I'm human. So too, if we look at God, because God created us in his own image and likeness, God is very upset with a lot of us. From heads of governments to leaders to elders to children to parents to everybody. God is upset. He's displeased with the way things are going. So, anger expresses that I am against this or that and I would take an active stance to oppose something that determines as both wrong and important. Okay, so we know the things that God say we ought not to do. We still do it. God is going to get angry. We know the things that we ought to do. We do what we want to do. And when we are faced with the consequences of our actions... We are angry, but it's our disobedience that puts us in this state. God's anger is measured in a reasonable response to injustice and evil. I'm going to read that again. God's anger is measured and reasonable response to injustice and evil. As a parent, when my children would have done things, I would get very annoyed and Sometimes I would say some things and they would laugh at me because, you know, as a parent, when you keep talking, talking, oh, she just babbling, she just talking, we're not paying her no mind. But for those who know me, when I stop talking, that's when it's really like, okay, so too with God. God has given us instructions. He has told us what to do. What would happen when we do this? What would happen when we do that? So sometimes when we, we say, but God, you're not hearing me. God, why are you so far away? God, I'm not hearing from you. God is sitting still and he's waiting. He's watching. Have you ever done something wrong where you thought that, okay, the, the punishment, I was severely punished for something that I had nothing to do with. I wasn't even around as a child. But it was put on me so it looked like me and the punishment that I got, I was like, this is ridiculous. I had nothing to do with it. So too... We have to be responsible. So it says here in Deuteronomy 28, it speaks of all the blessings of obedience and all the curses of being disobedient. Verses 1 through 14 tells you all the nice things. You'll be blessed going in. You will be the, the lender, not the borrower, and all these good things. This is in Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through 14. Verses 15 to 68 talks about the curse of being disobedient. So family, we ought to try and be obedient because the scripture, the, the psalm that I'm reading from today, it's Psalm 7 verse um, 11 through 13. God is an honest judge. He seeks, he looks, he hears, and he reads the contents of your heart. So he knows how to bless you and he knows how to discipline us when we be disobedient. So he sees, he knows everything. And then it says, he is angry with the wicked every day. Family in Christ, if we be really truthful, we are living in a time where we ought to be very careful. You may say that you're not wicked, but we all have had some wicked thought or um, action said, done to us, from us, to other people. As Queen Esther often says, you know, Maybe one time I was the accuser. I was being accused and I probably have accused people. So I have been wrongfully done injustice, but maybe some point in time in my life that I can remember that I was unjust to someone. So family in Christ, let us try to strive to be better. Let us ask God where we are falling short to, to come up. Let us ask God first to give us the spirit of humility where it says that if we humble ourselves and we pray and we seek God, that then he would hear from heaven 
and he would heal the land. The land, my family in Christ, could be your brother, your sister, you, or the nation, the world at large. So I want to end with a short prayer. Thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity again. Thank you, O oh God, that you do not give us swift justice at times, but you give us warnings, subtle hints, and clues that, oh God, that we could come up and, and, and get it right. Dear God, I pray that at some point in time, you know, that we would all seek your face diligently and that there would be peace on earth. Dear God, you said that the things that are in heaven, you want so much for us to have it on earth. I thank you, Master God, for who you are. I thank you for your son, Jesus. I thank you, O oh God, that you are a God of compassion and mercy. And I also know, God, that I ought to thank you that you are a God of correction. And I thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Have an awesome day, family in Christ. These devotions are to help us understand who we are as followers, believers, and also to spread the word because sometimes you may think that you're doing it right and we're not. I might think that I have it all together and I'm not doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing to have it all together. So we have to learn from one another. We learn step by step.